Today I thought I would revisit a concept that I introduced on this channel, oh it may have been a year ago, maybe not quite that, but it was back when we only had a handful of subscribers, probably well under a thousand at that point, and so not a lot of people heard the idea, so I thought I would represent the idea that I refer to as the blacksmith's challenge. Now what does that really mean? Now this isn't one of those ice bucket challenges or push-up challenges or any of that kind of stuff, nor is it a challenge to make a specific item to see who interprets how to make a hammer the best or how to make a sword the best or any of those things. That's not what this challenge is about. This challenge challenges you to think like a blacksmith. It challenges you to use your imagination use your creativity and apply those to a very simple but very limited starting point. And that starting point is this. And what this is is simply a piece of half inch square bar three inches long. And that's the only real rule in this challenge and of course you don't have to do it exactly like I do it if you want to choose some other starting point. But the idea is to create a project using only this starting point. This is all the material you get. Do something with it. What are you going to do with it? That's the challenge. Think like a blacksmith. Now if you're a welder and want to think like a welder, you can take a single piece of half inch square bar and you can cut up as many times as you want and weld it back together in any shape you want if you're a welder. If you're a machinist, you can put it in a mill and do whatever you want with it. Make component parts and make a little internal combustion engine out of it if you want to. But this channel is for blacksmiths, so let's think like a blacksmith. What is a blacksmith can I do with this little piece of steel? And it doesn't have to be mild steel. If you want to make a tool, use half by half tool steel. You can make functional tools with this. So let's look at some of the things that I've done in the past. And I've done this off and on for several years. Every now and then I just get a wild hair and say, eh, I'm going to cut up some half inch square bar and I'm going to make a handful of things. And every time I come at it with a different thought process and a little bit different frame of mind and I end up with different things. Now in my previous video on the concept, I started off suggesting that perhaps this was a good thing to just make some tapers out of. Just practice tapering. Square octagon round. So here's a square taper and you can see how much that square bar that started off as that bar and this is how far it tapered out in a nice even square taper taking it to round it got a little bit longer. So this is a good way to see what what things will do. Just a two-sided flat taper it got that much longer. And you can do just little little pointy tapers if you want to. And that's just exploring technique and it's a good way to explore technique. You could also use it to explore various twists and you could do every twist you've ever heard of in a piece of half by half by three inch bar just to have a little stash of different kinds of twists. You can cut it in half and forge weld it back together but if you do a good job it really doesn't look any different than the original bar. You can do a square upset corner. Do some little joinery practice. Now these, the, the rivet on this one was a regular rivet. I did not make the rivet out of the bar and I think that's reasonable if you need a rivet or a wooden handle for a tool to make that separate. But the majority of the piece, all the key components should be made out of half by half by one. Or half by half by three, sorry. You can make little scrolls. This is all just exploring technique. I made a ring by splitting down the middle of the bar and opening it up into a ring. A little split bar cross, that was kind of fun. 
but you can also make usable projects. This is actually a decorative bolt, all made from that half by half by three. Nice, nice decorative head. That was was kind of fun. I did not make the nut. There wasn't enough material to make the nut. How about a uh, dice? This is a six-sided dice. You'd have to make uh, several of those to uh, play a nice game of Yahtzee, but you could. But more actual projects. What else could we do? I made just a simple leaf just to see how much this bar would spread out into thin material. And this isn't that thin. That's probably about 16 gauge. If you took that out to 22 gauge, it'd be pretty darn big. Now I took a piece of spring steel, this is just coil spring, and I drew it out to the half by half, and out of that I made some simple railroad spikes. Oop, wrong one. Simple railroad spikes. These little mini railroad spikes, a lot smaller than a regular railroad spike. And one of those spikes I turned into what everybody makes railroad, out of railroad spikes, a little spike knife. And there's a video on making that. This other spike that I didn't bother to put a point on, we will turn into a little railroad spike tomahawk, just because we can. I don't know if we'll do that today or if we'll do something else, but we're going to get to that pretty soon. Out of that same coil spring, I believe, um, you, could, you could buy half by half tool steel and cut it into three inch pieces. There's a scriber, there's a center punch, and there's a little cold chisel. Those are all completely usable tools, all using that same starting point, and these are tools that you could use in your shop every day if you wanted to, while exploring the possibilities from a piece of half by half by three inch tool steel, or spring steel in this case. And there's a bottle opener made out of that. So those are useful projects made out of it. So there are quite a few options in what you could do with a simple piece of half by half by three inch steel. So that's really as difficult as the whole concept needs to be. It's nothing special. You don't have to make any of the things that I've made. These are just some of the ideas that I've come up with at different times. And today I'm going to come up with something else. I haven't completely figured out what it's going to be. But we're going to do it all out of a piece of half by half by three. I'm starting to sound redundant, but that's the key. That's the whole challenge right there. It's this piece and using this thing to develop skills, come up with ideas, think out of the box. It doesn't have to look like it was made from this. If you're doing twists, well, that's okay if it still looks like it was made from a bar this size. But this scribe, you can't tell that it came from a bar that size. So you might as well have fun with it. Maybe we'll make an S-hook out of it and draw this out to quarter inch square bar first and make an S-hook out of it. Maybe we'll make a kind of a decorative S-hook out of it and do something a little different. So let's get the fire started and let's go make something out of what? That's right, half by half by three. So I think I'm going to go ahead and go with the S-hook idea just because it'll be something interesting. I typically make S-hooks out of quarter inch square bar or quarter inch round bar. In theory, a piece of half square has four quarter inch square bars worth of material in it. So if it's three inches long, we're going to stretch that four times that length or 12 inches. That's a fairly long S-hook, so I may not go that far. We may leave it more like 5 16 square or something like that. We'll just kind of see this isn't necessarily about precise results, it's about exploring the possibilities. Are there easier ways to make an S-hook? You bet there are. Starting with quarter inch square bar is way easier than forging this out four times its length. But the point of this exercise is what can you do with the mass? How do you rearrange this mass of material into an another shape, another set of dimensions that you can work with. And that's really what we're exploring. So we're going to take the time, we're going to draw this out, and we're going to come close to four times its length. Maybe it'll be three times its length. But we'll find out. So let's get it hot. And this is a good place to work over the horn.
So I'm pretty happy with that very end. I'm going to get a smaller pair of tongs, turn it around, and work this way, and that'll give me something that's easier to work with. Again, I'm not too worried about an exact dimension on this, making it a nice clean piece of stock is the main thing. And we're just a hair over a quarter inch down at the very tip, and of course it tapers. And we'll try and take that out. Now that it's longer, it's easier to get to the center. It's getting pretty close to ready to go up to the face of the anvil. I think I'll turn it in for end one more time. Finish taking out that lump. And I think if it is fatter in the middle, that might actually look good. So I'm not going to worry too much about it if it tapers equally from each end. I think that's about all I'm going to do over the horn. Now I'm going to go up to the face and clean that up and make it a little bit less lumpy and bumpy. Nothing too special here. Just cleaning it up. And then we'll worry about making the hook out of it. I also want to check and make sure my fat spot is relatively well centered. You can still do a little bit of drawing out here. Overall I'm at nine and a half inches and the fattest part is at about four and a half. So I could stand to stretch this out just a little bit more. Pretty darn happy with the way that looks. Now from here on, I'm just going to approach this like I normally would for a, an S-hook made out of square bar. That means I'm going to taper the end and put a little curly cue on it, bend a hook, turn it around, do the same thing to the other end, and then I'll put a twist in the middle. That's a little out of sequence from the way most people do it, but I'll explain why I do the twist last when we get to that point. I'm turning this a quarter inch between, or a quarter turn between every hammer blow as I draw that out. You may not be able to see that in the camera, but that takes that to a point very quickly. I'll heat it up again to do the curl, and it doesn't need to be super hot, just enough to make it want to scroll over a little bit. So there's that. Now this would be easy to do with a vice held bending fork or a bending fork in the anvil 
or even a little jig that I use for making S-hooks all the time. But you really don't need these just to make a few S-hooks. So we're just going to do it by hand and by eye. You could also do it with a pair of scrolling pliers, but again, we're not going to use that. Now I'm going to cool that little curl off, just in case I accidentally tap it with the hammer. And then I'm just going to bend this around the horn of the anvil. Try not to hit the same place too many times, you'll end up with a little flat hook. That's really all we need to do. And that's a nice little, S, little single hook there. Let's turn it around to the other end. So again, we're going to draw this out, turning a quarter turn between each hammer blow. I'll go a little bit slower this time. As you can see, I'm turning it just a quarter turn in this hand, and back and forth, and because I've raised it up off the anvil, I'm matching my taper on the back side, so I don't have to turn it 360 degrees. I might do that at the end just to kind of clean it up and make sure everything looks good. But drawing it out, you don't really need to do that. So, that's uh, ready for the curl. Now let's think about the curl a little bit. If you put this hook up and curl that down and then bend it back, the hooks will be on the same side. So we want the hook first hook down when we bend this curl and then when we bend this back on itself the hooks will be on opposite side for an actual S shape instead of a C shape. So we'll put our hook down and hope my arm isn't too much in your way. Try to change my hammer angle a little bit there. So there's another nice little curl on the end. Now we'll heat it up and do the, the hook. I've cooled the curl off just in case I hit it with the hammer. You want these hooks to look the same. If you're going to make a whole bunch of hooks, it's worth making a little jig for, but to do just a handful, it's better to learn to do them by hand and by eye. So there is a, a completely functional S-hook. Now the ends aren't quite the same. I'm going to go ahead and adjust this one. I like this one better. So I'm going to put that back in the fire and I'm going to make that just a little bit bigger, I think. I think that looks better. Now the last thing I want to do is put a twist in the middle here. There are a couple of reasons why I wait to do the twist until after I've done the hook. One, it helps me eyeball the center of the bar so I don't have to measure it and that saves a little bit of time. But also you'll notice that the hooks don't always line up in the same plane after you've, you've made the hook. Sometimes they're a little off. And if you put it in the vise and twist it, you get a chance to align those as opposed, you know, all in that one step as opposed to making it two different steps. Also, if you did your curl on the wrong side and ended up making a C hook instead of an S hook, doing the twist an extra half turn allows you to get that back in line the way it should have been in the first place. So it helps give you an opportunity to correct some mistakes at the time of the twist that you'd otherwise have to take a separate heat to correct. Not a real big deal, but I think it just goes a little bit more efficiently that way. I'm kind of interested to see how this behaves with that fat spot in the middle. So it's going to be a little bit different than twisting just a plain square bar. That's one full twist. Now you've got to go in even numbers here or your hooks end up wrong, unless they were wrong to start with and you're trying to correct something. Take a chance to eyeball this. Make sure it looks pretty straight. So you can see where the thinner spots twisted faster. I think that's a pretty interesting effect though. If you don't want that and you want to leave it fat like that, 
then you'd need to make sure the center was hotter and then that would fix itself. Well there's still a little heat in this, you can correct it and you can make a pretty nice little S hook there. So that is the completed S hook. Not that it really matters, but our completed hook inside measurements about five and a half inches of usable hook. And that's made from, you guessed it, half by half by three inch long mild steel. Just shows you what you can do if you think about the mass and not about the shape and the form of the mass that you got it in. You can change it. You're a blacksmith. So that's a, another look at the blacksmith's challenge for those of you who weren't around on the channel when we did this the first time or did the presented the challenge the first time. It's the first time I've done this hook as part of the challenge. So that's just one thing you could do with a specific amount of material. And you could use any given amount of material, but what makes it a challenge is to use the same amount every time. So if you want to start with 5 8 square four inches long so you can make bigger projects. There's nothing wrong with that. Just try to use the same amount each time so that it is a constant challenge. Otherwise you're just making stuff and using random material sizes which is what you can do any other time in the shop. But this does help you envision what the material will do. How far will it draw out? Just doing these simple tapers that I talked about in the previous video gives you a real good education on what material does. When you draw out a piece of bar into a square taper, how much will it stretch? If you make it a round taper, how much will it stretch? How much do you lose when you do an upset square corner? If you upset it into a cube, how big will it get? All of these things are questions you can answer by using a specific amount of material and you can explore a lot of variety. And this takes stuff that is normally scrap. This is something that usually you have no use for, but look what we made out of it though. That's a very nice S-hook. There's nothing wrong with this. It's not just a test piece or a, a whim or just to say, well yeah, you can make an S-hook out of a piece of half inch square bar. This is a good usable thing made out of a piece of material most of us would consider to be waste material. So there's a positive sign there too. That's something that you can think about when you make stuff. But it's a chance to challenge your your thought process. Challenge yourself as a blacksmith. Challenge your imagination. Challenge your creativity. That's what this challenge is all about. It's not about challenging the other guy. It's not about me challenging you or you challenging me. It's about you challenging yourself. Just like today I challenged myself to see what kind of an S-hook I can make out of this. The next thing I think I'm going to challenge myself to do is to take this railroad spike looking thing that we made out of the spring steel in a previous video and you should go back and watch that video and I'm going to make that into a little tomahawk. To do that I'm going to need some tools. So I'm going to challenge myself to make a couple of tools that I'm going to need to do this out of what? Half by half by three inch spring steel. Same stuff this is because I had that piece of coil spring I had already drawn out into a half inch square bar. So let's see what that does. But that'll be another video. That'll be the next video we do on this subject. I hope this all makes sense. I hope you can have fun with it. Part of the fun though in my mind is sharing what you come up with. Other people see things. Maybe that helps them realize where their imagination can go, give them a little kickstart or a prod to say, oh, I didn't think about going down that path, let me try that. So it helps to share. How do we do that? That's a problem with YouTube. I can share with you very easily. If you're not making videos, it's hard for you to share with everybody else. You can put it on Facebook, you can share it on various Facebook groups, maybe, depends on the group rules, but that's not always the easiest thing. So as much as I try to resist being 
more sucked into Facebook because it really can take a lot of time and I'm already on a dozen different groups on Facebook at least uh, between woodworking groups and spoon carving groups and blacksmith groups and Rocky Mountain Smiths and professional blacksmithing groups and power hammer groups and fly press groups and all that kind of stuff. I'm on quite a few and I don't give most of them anywhere near the time and attention I should but I think the answer to this is for me to create a Black Bear Forge group not just my page that I post on but a place where we can post and discuss and everybody can post what they want it'll be a fairly open group I uh, don't think it won't be active when you see this video but I'll let you know when I get that done and that'll be a great place to share this kind of stuff take a picture of it with your phone post it to the group piece of cake done and I think that's going to be the best solution for this and while I may not be on it every day a lot of the people who are watching these videos can be on it on a regular basis so you get to see what each other's up to and this really is turning into kind of a community so I like that idea so anyways I've babbled long enough I hope you can get out and make something try making something out of half by half by three whether it's an s-hook a railroad spike to make a railroad spike knife out of just use your imagination in the meantime stay safe do wear your safety glasses and we'll see you for the next one